Hi, everyone. Thank you for being here. My name is Kate Kraft, and this is AmeriCoWalk's PED Talk series, where we discuss cutting edge issues in social justice, community design, and walkability with national and neighborhood level thought leaders. It's really an excuse for us to talk and chat with fascinating people who are doing great work supporting walkable community advocacy in creative and dedicated fashion. And it really helps us capture their wisdom for the rest of us. Today, I'm honored to be speaking with Vanessa Garrison, a co-founder and chief operating officer for Girl Trek, which we will hear a bit more about later. Before founding Girl Trek, Vanessa had a career working in digital media for Turner Broadcasting Systems and managed digital media projects for news and entertainment, including CNN, TNT, and Sports Illustrated. She also has worked in the nonprofit sector where she provided services to currently and formerly incarcerated women. Vanessa is a social innovator of the highest order, and it's a real privilege to have her join me. Thank you, Vanessa. I'm happy to be here, Kate. Great. Uh, before we get started, um, just tell me, how are you holding up during all these multiple pandemics and kind of what, se what uh, self-care are you doing? Thank you for asking. I'm, um, you know, I'm, 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 I'm in the game, meaning that I have managed to find every opportunity to see where I could take advantage of what's been happening in the pandemic um, and what's been happening in the justice movement across the uh, country to both kind of do personal reflection and do professional reflection. Um, and I've surrounded myself with a really inspiring community of people. So um, they've kept me hopeful and I have a daily discipline of walking, which is what I do with Girl Trek and that's kept me balanced. So I'm doing good, I'm doing good. That's good, that's good. I guess we're all pretty fortunate that we're able to uh, do that in these times. Yeah. Um, I don't know if it's possible, but there may be a few people who haven't heard of Girl Trek. So you wanna just tell us who Girl Trek is and how you're making the world better? Yeah, absolutely. So for those of you who have not heard, um, Girl Trek is the largest public health organization in the country serving black women. Um, we are a movement of over 850,000 black women and girls, um, soon to be 1 million uh, women and girls who commit to a daily habit of walking walking so that we could combat the obesity crisis um, that is killing black women and who commit to organizing in our communities so that we can revitalize um, the neighborhoods that we care so much about and advocate for the infrastructure um, and the removal of the systemic barriers that have kept us unwell for so long. So the movement is vibrant. It is led by local everyday women who lace up their sneakers. They wear superhero blue shirts. You may have seen them in your neighborhood. Um, they're heavily in involved in their communities. Um, and I'm just so grateful to be the leader of that movement. Oh, that's amazing. So I, I think there's a mantra, radical self-care. What's radical, radical self -care. about self-care? Right. So no, so the so when Girl Trek and Morgan and I and she and I founded Girl Trek um, almost uh, 10 years ago, when we started doing this work, we we started to have a national conversation about the health crisis and the health crisis, although the, the statistics said it was about inactivity and poor diet, we understood that it was a crisis of trauma, a, tr a crisis of disconnection, a crisis of loneliness. Um, and we really wanted to build a movement that addressed that. And the way that we did that is by going to Black women and telling them that we understand the pressures that you are under. We understand that this conversation that says two thirds of black women get little to no leisure time physical activity 
does not take into account that you have no leisure time, that you are getting paid 60 cents to the dollar of white men, that you are um, head of household for multi-generations who haven't had access to clean drinking water, or fresh fruits and vegetables, uh, trails, or, or, or walkable spaces, and that that's created a crisis for you where you don't have time to take care of yourself. And so we've asked Black women for the last 10 years to commit 30 minutes a day. And we say that that is radical because it means you will have to say no to so many things that you say yes to. And it means that you will have to change your mindset around who and is worthy and who isn't worthy of your time. So it's radical for Black women whose labor in this country has been our um, the only thing that has been celebrated. It's radical for us to say, no, we can stop and take care of ourselves. And that's why we call it radical self-care, not a self-care that is frivolous around bubble baths, or, or, you know, long walks in the sunshine, but a radical self-care that says that my community needs me to be well in order to do the work that needs to be done. Therefore, I'm going to step back and take care of myself so that I can pour back in later. That's great. And I think it's so hard sometimes for women to take that time. It is. So, it is. so I remember meeting you many years ago when Girl Trek was just this fledgling organization and yeah. now it is <laughs> this incredibly successful international it is. Fun, which and, and I know your work's not done but there have to be some proud moments can you share a few of those moments of accomplishments that you're most proud of Yes, and before I do that, Kate, I'll even for anyone who, because I'm imagining that the audience of people who are listening to us are people who really care, especially about like the walking movement, um, which is how you and I met. Right. And I want to honor actually that the work that Girl Trek is doing now, which has been celebrated and it's in the New York Times, and we have a viral podcast that I hope people are listening to called Black History Boot Camp, and we had a film that just came out called Daughters of. So that work feels very public facing and it feels very exciting. But behind the scenes, Girl Trek has always been um, an advocate for and a builder of the walking movement. And for us, so as a fledgling organization, um, we were like, no, we have to get involved in the Everybody Walk Collaborative and no, we have to go across the country and understand like, what does it mean to have walkable communities and what does it mean to advocate for legislature and how do, and this was a learning curve for us. And, and Morgan and I don't come from a public health background and we don't have an advocacy background, but we understood that we have a civil rights background of organizing a legacy that goes from Harriet Tubman to the women of Montgomery bus boycotts. So we just applied the practicality of the civil rights movement to all of the knowledge that was being shared through the through the Everybody Walks Collaborative, through America Walks, through Kaiser, and we just and through the U.S. Surgeon General's Office, um, especially when it was led by Dr. Regina Benjamin, who now serves on our board. We took all of that information and we um, applied it with a cultural lens that people have really. Um, that have responded to, but at the base of that is the same calls to actions that we've all been issuing, which is walking is the single most powerful thing a person can do for their health. Building walkable communities and investing in infrastructure is the single best way that you can support walkable communities. That there is an equity issue in this country that says that where that investment has been made has actually um, contributed to the crisis of health inequities in this country that are now being underlined by COVID-19. So Girl Trek as a walking movement, we, are, we still wanna be a mouthpiece for that. Um, but our work now kind of in the public eye, it feels a little bit splashier, but I just wanted to let people know we are still walking advocates. <laughs> right, right. We all have our core, right? Yes. Um, uh, how has Girl Track changed as a result of COVID-19? The biggest change, and it, it's been really hard for us to kind of grapple with and find solutions for, um, is that more than anything else, women are attracted to the Girl Trek movement because of the sisterhood. It is because of the um, community that we build. It's not because of the health benefits, which become really ancillary. And so women who come and meet at 5 a.m. in the morning in Jackson, Mississippi, or after church in Detroit, Michigan, or every Saturday religiously um, in big groups in Oakland or LA, those women we had to tell them could no longer meet in large groups because COVID was a threat. 
And although we adapted very quickly to start to provide some amazing digital programming that can support individual walking, including Black History Bootcamp, the podcast, it still does not make up for the community connection and the lifeline that Girl Trek served as for women in terms of group walking. And we are trying to balance that now with how do we, with no federal guidelines really, how do we safely encourage our women to keep walking um, and when and how do we encourage them to keep walking in groups? We're still trying to figure that out. Add on top of that, that there is an imperative that Girl Trek as a social justice organization stand on the front lines with the protests that are happening in communities. And so we've also also had to during this time of COVID ask ourselves how do we encourage women to protest safely so we've had some challenges and they've been significant and we don't have all of the answers but we've had um, thankfully a program that was already ready to respond um, to this type of a crisis and so for the most part we've been faring very very well yeah, that's good I, I mean my next question really was going to have was going to do with how ha have you evolved during this time of racial reckoning, I know that Girl Trek has always been a social justice movement, um, but now yeah. we make sure that we use this moment and not yeah. let it yeah, we've always been at the intersection of public health and social justice. We, one of um, our, our primary objective and mission is to mobilize women from inactivity to physical activity through walking. But the second big component of that, which people may or may not know, is that we train women to be organizers in their communities. And over the past three years have, cha have trained over 10,000 public health activists who are now organizing on behalf of Girl Trek. And so for us, the question um, in this time was, how do we, smartly deploy our resources, which are these engaged women, um, so that we can respond to the moment of now. For Girl Trek right now, that is us launching, launching a relaunching a campaign called the Black Girl Justice League, which is a campaign that we will run um, that launched on September 1st and will run throughout election day. That campaign is specifically targeted to increase um, voter turnout and educate voters around how to vote, early voting. And we're asking people across the country to take the, a historic walk with Girl Trek if they've never taken a walk with us, and that walk could be to the post office to mail their ballots or it could be to the <laughs> polls. And people can find more about um, Black Girl Justice League at girltrek.org. Oh, thank you. That's great to know. Um, so tell me, what is it about you that motivated you to start Girl Trek? Um, yeah, that's a good question. It, it always changes day to day because the motivation is actually so personal and so intrinsically tied to who I am that it's hard for me to pull out one moment or one thing. Um, but really what it is is that I am personally um, from a heritage of Black women who have struggled in a country that um, wasn't meant to support them, trying to navigate and survive, um, literally trying to avoid the health crisis that has um, the life expectancy in the, my family is 65 years old. So as a young black woman, I came to this work from a personal, a selfish standpoint of how do I solve what is happening in my family? And then I was able to partner up with Morgan, who was trying to solve that same thing for both herself and she was a teacher solving it for in the classroom. And together are kind of the conversations that we started to have around community building, around um, you know, quality of life for our communities around the root causes to the health crisis led us to um, this idea that walking um, and the cultural heritage of walking for social change would be a great way for us to motivate women to start to create physical habits that improve their health and that it would have this cyclical effect in our communities that would mean we would be walking together and talking to solve our most pressing challenges and that that idea was the foundation of which we launched Girl Trek. Amazing how successful uh, I mean, you did, you have, and you are creating an amazing movement. So, Thank what you. advice or suggestions do you have for others, other walking advocates, or others that might want to follow in your footsteps? That's a good question. Um, 
one start local and i know and that and that's something i do really love about the walking movement it still must continue to be grassroots um it still must continue to be people who claim their blocks right and then claim their neighborhoods and ask themselves how do i within my locus of control with the community around me um use walking as a tool for change, right? To improve things. How do I do that with these folks? And then you can knit that together with the other folks doing it over there. It must be a grassroots movement is my first thing. So I just wanna uplift and shout out all the local advocates who are out there doing it in that way. And then um, the second thing is the walking movement in particular, um, are you, do you call it the PED movement? Okay, this is this is where I don't, no, have, I the, don't even have the j jargon like correct. We we definitely call it the walking movement. Okay, yeah. So the whole this whole movement that we're everybody who is here who has somehow tuned in to hear this conversation, we're a part of one movement, right? right. So, uh, we we have a, a, a value of a, a shared value system. Right. Um, that value system. I want to challenge people who are um, who who tuned into this. I want to challenge everyone to ask themselves are the values that you are bringing to the movement, um, must they be the same for everybody? Have you considered where you have um, shut out other people's values? Have we, because I think the movement is too narrow, Kate. And so my advice would be, we must start to reconsider who we define as an advocate in this movement. We must start to reconsider the why of why we think it's important for people to be advocating. And we have to expand our definitions of that to include the things that matter most to communities that may not matter to you. Um, and, and, and that would be my bias is to not go so narrow that you um, leave out this really rich um, communities of black people, brown people, yellow folks, you know, folks of different backgrounds who I think traditionally in a let's face it, very, 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 very white movement um, have not felt that they've had a space. And in this world, even if you didn't know it um, six months ago, what is happening right now um, since the death of George Floyd, it means that there is no, there's no longer on the sidelines where you can be like, oh, my movement can maybe not include these people. No, 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 it's, it's not an option anymore. So diversity and inclusion, which, um, you know, let's talk about decolonization and reparations. I don't even believe in diversity and inclusion, but the idea that we can, but equity and equitable and, and, and access, um, I do believe in. And that conversation has to be ingrained in central to a part of not um, a, a side to anything else. And that I know is actually feels, I just want to honor feels like scary for some people. It feels uncomfortable for some people. It feels exhausting for some people. Um, and yet it is the work that is required if we are really going to have a revolution. I couldn't agree with you more for sure. Um, so what's next for you? And what's next for Girl Track? We're singularly focused on our big goal of a million black women um, walking right now. I think we're, we're, we're anxiously looking every day. We have 854,000 women <laughs> something of this week. Um, and that critical mass of a million black women, one, it's just something I personally dedicated in the last 10 years of my life to, so I wanna see it realized. And then also the power of a, a million black woman constituency is going to be so significant that what's next is for us to really thoughtfully think about what our agenda is and how we smartly use um, our power and resources. But first we must get there. So spread the word y'all, girltrek.org. Um, you know, we are a movement of women who walk and reclaim our health. Um, people, we have a, a podcast out where it's a walking podcast, so perfect for this audience. There are 30 minute episodes that teach people about um, heroes in black history. You can find it on Spotify or Apple. Um, and they're meant to be listened to while you walk in your neighborhood. So um, that's another way that people can connect to the movement. Great, um, and we will uh, put links to all of that on the, when we post this, this interview. Thank you. I cannot thank you enough for joining us. I am such an admirer uh, of you and of Girl Trek. So I really appreciate it. And thank you, Vanessa Garrison and Girl Trek. Um, we're out. Mm -hmm.